Greetings. Hope this finds you well. There's a poll that came out, um, polling, polling that came out asking voters in the United States if they supported a ceasefire in the ongoing conflict. But, you know, it's that's a very nondescript term and it's not really accurate. I mean, if it's quite a bit more accurate to say the uh, settler colonial apartheid regime of Israel and their continued ethnic cleansing and genocidal effort, do you support a ceasefire there? Um, it's obviously not how they phrased it, but anyhow, 66% of voters that were polled said that they supported a ceasefire, and that was over a majority of independents self-identified Republicans, and I believe 80% of those who identify as Democrats. And yet, yet, only as of this poll, 4%, I don't think the number's any higher now, 4% of elected representatives in the U.S. support a ceasefire. Only 4%, yet 66% of voters support a ceasefire. Two-thirds huge, huge discrepancy there. And again, is that surprising? No, it's pretty par for the course because politicians in the U.S. more often than not, with almost without fail, make decisions that aren't in alignment with what their constituents support or particularly what is in the best interest of the working class, both here and abroad, and that obviously extends to, um, you know, this this su supporting this apartheid regime of Israel as they continue to carpet bomb those in Gaza and continued their repression and, and killing of others. So here's the poll. 66% of all voters in the U.S. support a ceasefire, but in the House, it's only 4%. Yeah, clearly Congress doesn't serve the people. The foreign policy establishment and the weapons contractors are the real constituents. Look at that. And I believe this was back on a poll. I want to say this was an, on October 20th, right? And they have created a whole lot more death and chaos and destruction and tragedy and heartbreak since then on the Palestinian people, particularly in Gaza, but obviously in the other occupied territories as well. Look at that. Majority Republican, majority independent, vast majority of Democrats, but only four. 18 of 35 sponsors of the House ceasefire <coughs> resolution. Okay. Again, because you got to be in lockstep with the Zionist project that is the state of Israel, no matter how many people, it's close to 10,000 at this point that they've killed since October 7th, almost half of them children as they continue to bomb hospitals. We saw that really, really horrific bombing of the, I believe it was the Jabalia, Jabalaya refugee camp a couple days ago where at least 400 people were, were murdered, right? Bombing refugee camps, hospitals, ambulances, apartment buildings, leveling them to the ground, denying food, medicine, water, cutting off power, internet, Etc. But no, that's still not enough for for a ceasefire. Still not enough for a, a ceasefire. That's the level of um, you know depravity that infects you know the U.S. Congress, the Senate, presidency, uh, you know, Secretary of State, etc. As they're willing to say and do anything. Um, to stay in power, and that obviously includes um, supporting, continuing to support Israel's so-called state of Israel's genocidal effort towards the Palestinians in Gaza, even though 
people in the US don't want that to continue, but just like any other issue, basically it doesn't really matter what the people want. You gotta look out for the Boeings, Lockheed Martins, the Raytheons of the world. You gotta keep the apex of the world happy, right? <clears throat> All solidarity with the Palestinian people as they continue their liberation struggle. Peace.